Here's the trade-off, I think. I think people have a very distorted viewpoint of what it takes to be successful in real estate. Because look, I don't feel great about drinking at lunch. You don't? Like, I mean, I feel great that we could do it. Oh, I feel some guilt. <laughs> oh, I, I feel, feel guilty you? around it. Oh, see, I'm way past that, I guess. But I don't feel guilt around having to be on call at 11 o'clock on a Friday night. If or a Sunday night. Something. See, and that's the thing is, right? There's like, a trade-off. And I think one of the things that I found from a sanity standpoint super early on was I had to have secret time in my schedule because you work so many Saturdays and Sundays right. and you do take calls till seven or eight o'clock sometimes. And I get that there's real estate agents out there who are like, you don't have to have a business like that. Make it work on your schedule. I get that. There's also plenty of stuff still to do. And I want to reach a level of success that I'm not at yet. So like, I don't mind putting that extra time. So I also don't mind when I have weird off hours. Like I love being able to grocery store, going go to the grocery store at like two o'clock on a Thursday. Because there's nobody no else there, is there. And it's fully stocked. It's amazing. Exactly. It's, just, it's just me and some older ladies walking around, getting the essentials, right. and then we're out. It's so nice to do things on off hours. Yes. So I'm kind of with her, I don't feel guilty about it, but I also do know I could probably be a little more productive at noon on a fun day. It's so amazing whenever we partner, because yes. we yeah. hash this out. I feel like so many of our great ideas come over drinking and meals. <laughs> That's exactly Not that, always at First noon. of all, isn't Not that kind of noon. Italian of us, which I think is... is, is I a, think it's kind of a Ukrainian of us, is but okay. Is this kind of Ukrainian? Okay. Oh, 100%. I, I, I think, it's very Iowan of me. <laughs> there you go. I just think our our methods deserve more respect. Yes. Certainly. But <laughs> I, think, I think the cool thing about that dinner, because I kind of know where you're going with this, is we, as we were kind of hammering out what this partnership looked like, one of the main value propositions I could just bring in the conversation was, I don't really enjoy working with investment style properties. It's just not my thing. I don't speak that language at a high enough level to have conversations with the really actually serious investors. So we got to essentially tell her, right? It's like, I'm gonna give you every investor I come across. And then right. sure as hell, I get a phone call over the weekend that a past client of mine has a house that was struck by lightning. There's fire damage. It's probably gonna be a pretty significant insurance claim. And so we just got to talk about it today. And just in that, like I said, in that two minute conversation, she asked me three things and I was like, I didn't even know I should ask to Four know questions. those things, <laughs> yeah. right? So like, that's one of the things I love about it most because now this is an opportunity that could turn into all this other stuff, right? It could be an opportunity for her and her investors, it could be an opportunity for us. It's right. an opportunity for my clients, all these people, because I'm able to have a conversation with somebody that's now 10 feet away, as opposed to being like, well, I'll try and hack my way through this. So many agents, let so much business die on the vine right. because they don't, just like Matt said, he didn't even know what questions to ask us. Right. What, what are we, when we take over the world, yep. what is going to be our A to B as far as building a team around the investment side? What do these agents need to know to be able to be successful with investors right out of the gate? Yeah. Honestly, they need to be interested in taking a hands-on approach. So for instance, I was talking to one of y'all's agents this morning and she said, you know what? He, he wouldn't tell me what he meant by full cosmetic, but he said it needed full cosmetic and the numbers didn't work. And I said, well, did you do the walkthrough with him? And she said, yes. The problem that I see in that is he didn't want to confide in her because it wasn't going to be a, an equal conversation, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you're there and you know okay, this is how much flooring is in this area of DFW, right? This is how much I expect to spend on cabinets. Yeah. I mean, you name it, you need to have a good ballpark idea, not yeah. Home Depot prices, actual prices out the door for an investor. Okay. If she knew that and she was able to walk through with him and say, no, I think it's going to be, or yep, you're absolutely right, 10 grand for flooring, depending on how fancy you want to make it. Yep. It's the confidence that comes from actually being hands-on. That's, and that's what I told her. That's I said, a Listen, huge part on of my it. next walkthrough, I will text you, come with me and just yeah. listen and let's just talk, right? <laughs> that's the part of this that's invaluable from a partnership standpoint yeah. too, because you as, from a resource perspective, that's something that I used to do early on with the team. We'd have Fridays where I would just take agents and go walk through houses and point right. out crap to them that they would have probably had to screw up five times to ultimately learn, right? right. Or, or whatever. And I think that's what you bring, not just to me, but to other agents on the team. It's already been a pressure release valve mm -hmm. from the standpoint of there's some place to hand off business right. that otherwise probably wouldn't be. I was calling expires this morning. Yeah. And I'm able to get further down the road with some of these people yeah. just by having conversations that they know are true because they've lived it, right? Because they know exactly, you know what you're talking about because you're asking questions in a way that you could not know. If you can cut through that, and get to the meat of the problem. And just like with your client, I think 
you're going to be a hero. That's the point, right? right? Because I'm, you and I are going to go in there and we're going to hand him options he never even knew existed. Absolutely. And they're legitimate options that I've been through that we know how to work, that we know what kind of money he's actually looking at. Yeah. Lack of headache. I mean, it, so it all true. depends on what somebody's price is. I've, but. I've said this like forever. I just don't think it's that difficult to find investor clients. That's not what agents struggle with. Agents struggle mm -hmm. with, if you want to work with more investors, right. it's not here are the lead generation mechanisms to go no. get more investor clients. No. Investors are out. Literally anyone around you with money can be a real estate investor. It is what value do you bring to the table, right? Or a little debt. Or a little debt, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the point. That's the Here's thing the deal. that I think if most you, people If you can it. speak that language, yeah. though, you can take a person from just somebody who has some disposable income to a successful real estate investor if you're able to bring value through education, through yeah. knowing what you're doing, through being able to advise on this is a great property for this type of exit strategy, right? Like, until you know that stuff, it's not about finding investor yeah. clients. It's about serving them because they're really right. everywhere. I don't think people pull the trigger on real estate investments in North Texas the way that they should. No. I think so much of that is an education gap. Absolutely. Agreed. You know what I mean? And so few agents out there, we got more real estate agents than we know what to do with. The ones that we actually, like when, when push comes to shove, know what they're doing on the investment right. side, that's like a handful, maybe. Maybe. I have a shockingly little knowledge of how it all functions yeah. together and how deals come together and very honestly at the most basic level what a good deal just looks like on paper right, right? i think that's the big disconnect a lot of agents don't even know you just had to look at numbers and be like hey this is this at least worth great, exploring right? so your your time efficiency is atrocious and here's the cool thing too for all the flips that i've got going and my clients have going guys those are literally listings for all the buyers for the agents in the office absolutely like and the beauty of it is if you come if we can make that match in advance pick your finishes this is Absolutely. no different than working with a builder and that i mean for an average residential buyer that's man. we have low inventory market like we have right now yep. and we have the ability for clients to come in and any one of our agents to go look we got these 10 properties ready to go right put them on our contract now and we'll work the reno for you and you pick everything and mm -hmm. we'll make it your dream home like yep. that sounds like that's such boozy Chip and JoJo stuff, but that's the reality of the market that but we're that heading into. takes the right buyer. We are creating sure. inventory right now. That absolutely creates. You and I talked about this on a podcast the other day. Yeah. The perfect example of how many flips we walk into, yeah. like me, from just a residential side. Walk into with buyers and they're like, damn it, I wish I would have gotten a hold of this house before the investor did because the way they did this is atrocious, right? right? It goes back to what you were talking about earlier, the Home Depot stuff. the things I'm going to change in a brand new yeah, well, and you can't do right. that. You can't go rip out a new remodel because you just paid for it. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> it was worth the cost of the home. It, so unless right. you're cool in a negative equity situation, yeah. right? Then you're like, stuck you just can't with what you get. But we can take those investors who are, maybe don't have a huge amount of capital and plug them into a situation where they can take what they do have mm -hmm. and grow it into things where they can then start buying two properties, then start sending you to the auctions right. and do all the things that the big boys do. It makes that, you more competitive you, too, right? You're not yeah. going to get good deals if you can't be competitive. No, and this, exactly. This will help the... Because if you can close quick, people will bring you deals. Yeah. And this if will, you can make money on it. This will help that newer yeah, investor 100%. with that issue, right? Absolutely. They'll be able to be competitive and, and have something to stand behind. I love bit. that one-stop shop idea for investors, right? I think it appeals to every single type of thing that we want to do. Yeah, by the time we really sit down with you and get serious, you will have gone through what we created, right? right. So we control the narrative that way. You're going through our edu our free right. education, right. but it's coming from somebody who's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of investment right. deals before. So we know that if you go through that, you're ready to go. Okay. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to one of your investors? Get back to me. Get back to you. Get back to me. <laughs> well, so, she, so the, like Jenny and I obviously knew each other, but we actually had an opportunity to work a transaction together, which is how most people come into our world, right? And that was yeah. fun. You know, it was awesome, it but it was, well. it was for a family member of mine <laughs> we had the property listed for it. He knew it was an investment property. We had all the, we just were only bringing investors through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of that stuff. And, and so on that note, I brought an investor with me. There was some silly shit that happened me. with that house. And here's what's fun is we went in full. I mean, you yes. knew it was going to be a cash only investment. There's no lending, no hard money, no nothing. Yep. And come hell or high water, you were getting an offer, yep. whether it was from my investor me me somebody and yeah. that's and that's the conversation me yep. and and my client had we sat down and i'm like you have till six o'clock because at seven i'm offering yeah exactly I'll buy it. and he was like fair <laughs> enough and i was like but no like this is fair warning yeah <laughs> like you knew to one because if you're not going to make a move quick enough i will yep. yeah this is all about finding opportunities before other people know their opportunities right right it's all about 
understanding they what's an opportunity that other people miss. They can anybody else's book. That's, they cannot be opportunities. That's why knowing all the numbers makes sense yes. because the reality is I can tell you how many times I've had a listing conversation with just a residential seller who at the end of the day, they just got wonky numbers. And once we figure out all the money, they're like, oh no, I would do that. And it's like, well, no, we can do that, <laughs> right? Then let's. Yeah, right. and it's the same thing with the investing side. There's just a lot more moving parts to the number mm. side. And I bet you if we could really pin down what it is, agents don't understand how to have that conversation. Right. Think, think about it in terms of this too, right? Like, and I think it's why the, the, like specifically our team we stay mm -hmm. so nimble. The reality is the brokerage is a large lumbering beast that can right. only move as slow or as Very fast true. as its slowest moving soldier, right. right? So at the end of the day, if you have to stop every night and set up camp for all of these people, you can only move so fast. Mm -hmm. Whereas specifically on our team, when, you're, when it's an elite level, an elite group of people, you can move so much faster, right? Right. Every army has their big, massive body of people. Right. who just lumber along and they just crush the earth beneath their feet just due to their, just due to their sheer volume, right? Mm -hmm. Those armies also have super nimble, super fast, elite level people yeah. that can dart in and out Absolutely. and move and change. And that's really, when we talk about like brokerage versus team, sure, joining a brokerage, fine. I'll be honest with you, there's no brokerage on the planet that you could put me on that I'm not gonna freaking sell real estate. Not one, right? right? So if you really think your brokers matters a ton, a ton, I'm just telling you, for producers, it doesn't. They yeah. maximize our dollars. I can make some more money at different brokerages, but if you're telling me at the brokerage, I didn't do it how many houses I sell, they just don't. You know what I do get deals from? I get deals back because of the time I get back because of the transaction coordinators, because of the showing assistants, mm -hmm. because of all the efficiencies. I absolutely, or at the very least, maybe I don't even do more deals. I just do the same amount of deals in significantly less time. Right. Either way, that's what it allows me to do. There's not a brokerage on the planet I, I will say this confidently, that it's giving you time back. No. When did you come here to the States? When I was 10. When you were 10? Mm -hmm. So that was 95? Five. Five, really? Mm -hmm. What was that like? It was a fucking culture shock. I so bet. I moved from the capital city in the Ukraine, mm -hmm. which at the time had a population of just over 5 million. Oh, that's pretty big. Oh, yeah, it's a capital I don't know why city. I thought like, it's most no joke. Of the European countries were all spread out in a smaller. No, I grew up on deals. the 12th floor of a high rise. Okay. Like, wow. No joke. Um, I was even allowed to take the bus to school, like the public bus, but I just didn't know that my dad was in the next in the next section of the bus, kind of to make sure I didn't get kidnapped, right. you know, <laughs> like being a good parent. Um, so, yeah, and when we moved here, we moved to the smallest town you've ever not heard of in New Hampshire, which I, driving in, I thought was just the cutest little thing, right? And I'm like, oh, is this the village outside You moved to like a Christmas town? Basically, Hallmark. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going, hey, this is so cute. It's like the village outside the city. And everyone's like, no, this is where we're moving. And I went, what? How did you guys land there? Um, through family ties. Yeah. So we immigrated here with the invitation of other family that was sure. already here. So okay. it's, a, it's a fairly long process. Schools are very different there. It's not just, uh, okay, you've turned six or five or whatever. So enjoy You're kindergarten. In this grade. Right. Yeah. yeah. There you actually had to test into school to make sure you weren't like super slow and going to bring people down. Sure. So get into first grade, you it's had to know addition, subtraction, right. multiplication, and division, and had to write and read cursive, right? So I went through that, and then I came here, and they're like, see if you can color that elephant, said elephant from the flashcard, in the lines. Yeah, because you don't just even do your like best. cursive and, like and, and stuff until like third grade here. You're like dying. And you're just kind yeah. of... <laughs> you don't learn, the problem with American schools is you don't learn cursive until you're old enough to know how useless cursive is. Well, now you'll learn it all. It's By the time you learn it, oh, oh, yes, you do. My oh, son is, is learning again? contract. Yeah. What, what, what yeah, grade is he in? Second. See, he's already old enough to know it's bullshit. And you know what's hysterically is funny? My husband can't, it? can't read cursive in English. Nobody can. And he's like, what does this say from any teacher? I'm like, that comes I would home be like that scene like from Billy Madison where I try to write Phil Rizzuto on the board and I make up a new Z. Just make up. Spell buzz. It's so dumb, right? Like... Right. What did you go to college for? Corporate law. What? How can you have a moral compass and be in corporate law? Well, so I'm sitting there you. like after a week going, holy shit, okay, I'm either going to always be pro bono and be completely right. fucking broke, right? Yeah. <laughs> or I'm just, I can't do this. Yeah. Learning whole new ideas like that, especially at my age at 42, which I used to, brought, I used to bring up my age all the time. I brought my age up on a video in a long time. At 42, I don't. That's 42. I'm, I'm not super. I'm not super employable by hell. anything that's corporate. The reality is, as soon as they see my name on paper, my, my age on paper, with my experience, there's yeah, gonna be a ton of What would you want to do, even if you were like you say, because you're not employable? Like, it's the pay scale, you? I think, now that I would be disappointing. I'd have to be yeah. an entrepreneurial endeavor. 
could I take could I take myself all the way back to where I was when I first started bartending? Sure. I could I could live on very minimal amount of money. I don't know what I would be capable it's not of even doing like I, at this level. Well, that's the thing is I don't think there's a lot like of things that are going to make a the career pay. you can have. I'll be a bull. Really you could be a comedian. Be I'll be a bullpen sure, catcher. Not that but even that gets a lot mad money. Just sit in the bullpen and catch relief pitchers all day. He's got to be a target. Probably the Yankees. Pick someone. <laughs> Who did Shitty last season? I don't need to. Like I don't need to. I don't need to, I don't need to throw That's people out stealing second. I just got to catch the damn warm up. So pitches. you're saying bench warmer for the second string Yankees? For probably what this guy's probably making two hundred grand a year. Oh, warming benches. That. Oh my god. Probably even more oh than my that. Gosh. Free jersey. All the autographs Four. you want. <laughs> I don't think they get all the autographs they want. Right. I think that's probably really taboo. <laughs> the people that we have been able to build around and build these systems around, they are so much more talented than we are. It might be the one thing we've ever done right in our business is find people that are smarter, faster, better, more adaptable than we are. Yep. I don't even, I used to say that all the time that I want to forget how we do everything in our business. I'm starting to get to a point where I don't remember a lot of stuff. Yep but other, other people do, someone else does. The ability to just give people like Jenya the ability to just fucking go, dude. It's gonna be cool as hell. Well, and hu human capital is where it's all at, not just yeah. for you, for you, for me, not just like taking the team completely out of it, right? The whole reason it makes sense for me is because the type of leverage from a human standpoint that I could get access to, to replicate it on my own would have been astronomically expensive, A. And again, I think you reach a certain point where the conversation becomes about time. Time and the, well, the training that goes into that. Yeah, well, and finding the people want. that thrive in the area you need them to thrive in, that's, and that's what I think you guys have nailed on the head. I mean, most most of the examples I've seen are truly amazing because you take somebody who wants to be in real estate and they do well enough, right? Right. But their love for something else sort of outshines it, and you found a way to take that and plug it in to where it's beneficial for the team. It's beneficial for them and their family, and they really yeah. get to thrive. Because when you love what you do, it shows. You can't bullshit that. I agree. We do have a shitload of fun, man. We have a ton of fun. <laughs> I think, I think, I think part, part of what this alignment between the three of us that makes sense the most, and it, it always makes sense at the beginning, is like, that's the part we're on alignment with. One of the things mm -hmm. that Brian and I said is, is like, the money has shown up. Like, everybody said it would. Right. Right? The money part of this will take care of itself, but right. it's not about that. No. Now, that's really easy to watch somebody say that and be like, oh, that's really easy. I'll tell you right now, you can't bring that shit to me because I've been super broke and so is he, right? Right. Like, exactly. Like, I, remember thinking the, I remember thinking the exact thing you're talking uh, when about When people now. say that to me, like, it's right. really easy to say that you're not doing it for yeah. the money. The reality when is... When you have money. The money I right. used to say that, and yeah. now I get to be on the other side. The money shows up when you're in alignment with people who are just doing the right thing. Brian yeah. and I started doing stuff the way we wanted to do it against the advice of people who are way higher up the food chain than we were isn't right isn't that the truth and, and then, isn't that amazing it's where amazing. you're like mm. and we weren't even <laughs> sure right like they were right. like it, trust me we were not even sure no but it shows up in space when we get an opportunity to like partner with people like you and chris and and not even just high producers who decide to join but people who don't really know what they're doing and then put their trust in you mm -hmm. right like now we get to take that experience and bring it to somebody like you who doesn't need you don't need to, you don't need my help working contracts right. or how to convert leads but the really cool thing is we can certainly all partner and share our knowledge on how to yeah. share this with more people who are like-minded and if 10 people say no but the 11th person says yes that's all i give a shit about right. so that's the thing is if you did because you like this is a different partnership but even mm -hmm. if you did we built that too right mm -hmm. we've we're able to stand behind and this is like so cool to see some of the tangible stuff a person who used to be a waitress did 18 deals in our first two months in our or three months in our right. business. That is so crazy it's to insane. me. To the point where it's like I don't even know that I am yeah, deserving of some I of the stuff the other people that? in our business do. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Where it's like I, you guys are so much more talented than we ever were. Yeah. Right. But now we're all doing it together. And but that's they're giving so the cool. tools to be that successful. Oh yeah. And that's the difference. Because yeah. you literally hand the systems and processes and the people who are in the key positions that need to be where they are yeah. on a silver platter and say, go be successful. Yeah. Like, this is all you need. I think that's such a need. good thing for people that are looking to build a team to like understand too. It's like, you should never start a team too early. We always caution against that. Well, you and I both did it twice. And it I failed, did it yes, and it failed mm -hmm. miserably. Mm -hmm. But then there's this weird middle area where you right. also don't always need to be the most pr talented person on the team. No. If you're always the most talented person on your team, I would challenge how good your team is. And I don't mean that 
No. You can't you're gonna hate life, life too. But just trust me, like well, your whole exactly. job I as a team leader should be. the smartest person in the yeah. room. The it should be to bring more value to people who have more talent than I'm you. I'm leaving right? the room. That's something I've had to humble myself with badly lately. It's not being the so most. So somebody from the herd group put this beautifully, and it actually changed the way I think about it. I, I'm, I'm an honest person. You guys sure. know that. My response was simple. I don't want to constantly be the smartest, most producing, bestestest person in the room. Yeah. And she said, okay. She's like, take your room where you're the smartest and your best, and let's put that room in an auditorium. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I like that. That is good. And I literally sat back and went, I like it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Put yeah. me in the auditorium.